All right, so <clears throat> a few different ways you can do this. <clears throat> you can do the uh, LHS minus RHS strategy, but that's not always going to work, okay? So in this case, I, I think it actually does when I tried it out, but I want to show another strategy um, for you, and it's, I call it the big brain strategy because basically <laughs> what you need to do is you need to think about something that you never would have thought of unless you do this. And what I need you to do is, if you're doing this in an exam, what you go, what you do is you go to the back of the book and you do something that's mathematically not really quite good and it's uh, kind of working backwards. So kind of like reverse engineering the strategy. All right, so we're kind of working backwards here. And the reason why I don't want you to put this in your actual response is because we're going to assume this is true. Like we have the inequality, we can't really do it. Uh, we can't really do much with it. We're going to assume it's true. And we start working backwards. So we say, we just use this and we start working with it. We're seeing if we can play around with it and we're seeing if we can get an expression that seems to make sense. So, um, you know, fractions here, can't really do much. Let's try multiply by two. Okay, um, let's put everything to one side maybe. Let's see what happens. And I get something like this. <clears throat> so the idea with this uh, backwards big brain strategy is that I'm trying to think about, okay, how can I start off with something which is ultimately going to lead me to this inequality? So it, it's, you can see how it's cheating, right? Like we've got the destination in sight and I'm trying to think about what do I need to start with so that this is going to be true. This here looks like I can't do much with, but your third strategy, um, Angus, do you have the third strategy I told you about? Start with a known result. And it sort of links to the second strategy as well, which uh, we know that squares are always positive. So to prove the AMGM inequality, one of the ways we can do it is start with a known result. And the known result is that we know that squares are always positive, or greater than or equal to zero, depending on the conditions. So over here, right, I don't have a square at the moment, but it's a bit of factorization in disguise. Because as a bit of a hint, this is actually a perfect square. I wonder if anyone can see it. OK, what is it? Yeah? Well, what, would it, what would its factorization be? Oh, uh, well, its factorization. I'm assuming it's like root A. Yeah. Root minus yep. root B. Yep. And then because it's a perfect square, this is going to be the same. Can you see how these are the same? All right? Because if you expand this out, you'll end up getting square root of A times square root of A. That's just A. Square root of B times square root of B. Positive B. And these two middle terms together, yeah? So this step to this step, not immediately obvious. <clears throat> but like I said, perfect squares are a key part to answering all these algebraic inequalities because what it allows you to do is get this. Perfect squares allow you to get statements which you know are going to be true. You know that this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero because you're squaring this whole thing. So now that you've got that, <laughs> literally what you're going to do is you're going to flick back to your uh, response section of your exam and you're going to just start working backwards from what you have, right? So you know that this is, this is a known result. You know that this is always true because why? Because it's greater than or equal to zero, right? Would you agree? We don't write that. So we start with this now. Okay, so, what about in the exam? How do we start with that? So in the exam, what you'd say is because you can start with a known result, something that is always true. Like you know that a squared is always going to be greater than or equal to zero, for example, right? You know that this is going to be greater than, always greater than or equal to zero. So what you write is you say you consider this expression. You consider the square root of a minus square root of b squared always being greater than or equal to zero. This is what it means to start with a known result, right? Because what I can do is I know this is always true. I'm allowed to start with this. So we get this by no right on. <laughs> yeah. What do we write it? Yeah, what I would do is I'd write the back of you, like some spare book writing paper or something like that. And then, yeah. Um, this is what I'm saying, right? It's kind of like a, it's like a hack method almost in some sense because... Is there a way of doing it with others? Um, in this case, you can do LHS minus RHS. Um, but I'm going to show you an example we can't and we, we might not be able to. And this is just an, another method that we can use. Yeah, I would multiply it by two since we know the other side is zero. I don't to prove this. So this one you can do it, okay, but I want to show you a few other methods where you basically have to know like certain results and the way you can get these certain results is by 
like expanding it back out. If that makes sense. Jot it down first and then I'll show you how to write I'll show you how to write it out. Basically, you actually have your answer here now, right? Because what you're doing is you're working backwards from this because this is like your goal, right? This is where you want to get to. And this is where we're starting with. We're starting with a known result. And now what I can do is I can say, okay, well, from this, I can expand it. I wonder what we're going to get. Well, we actually get something very familiar. So you'd actually get root A, root B, like this. Um, but then you can, in fact, you can put those together as one third. Okay, and then, hey, actually, we can factorize here, right? Oh, no, we don't want to factorize, we already did that. We can split this up into our um, arithmetic mean and geometric mean. So we've got a plus b <coughs> is greater than or equal to 2 root a b. And so then we have a plus b on 2. Dividing both sides by 2 we'll get a plus b on 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of ab. Therefore, this is tr true. So you can see the like, idea behind it, right? The idea is that we start with some known result, which uh, we creatively come up with, and we can use this because we know that the square of a number is always going to be greater than or equal to zero.